best before this date. After this date, not the best, but uh, still pretty good. There are people trying to get your money, and it's not just the IRS. Here are 15 of the sneakiest food business tactics you never noticed scamming you. Combos aren't always saving you money. 100 minus 43, take the one from the zero. Wait. <gasps> You may order a combo rather than a selection of different items, and you may figure you're getting a decent price, right? Yeah, maybe. Mm. Many combos nowadays are actually priced the same as their a la carte counterpart, and sometimes even more. However, there is a clever way to game the system by creating your own combination deal using the value menus. You can create a combo from value menu options and come out with a seriously great deal. Things aren't always what they seem. Here, have an avocado. Yay! More than a few burrito businesses have been caught using avocado paste rather than real avocados in their guacamole. A former Subway employee also pointed out that the light and regular mayonnaise are the same. And according to one burger chain employee, it could be your decaf coffee that's actually been keeping you up at night because it's not actually decaf. Excuse me. That better be decaf. Sneaky tactics, indeed. Healthy menu items aren't usually so healthy. Hey, is that healthy food? Fast food restaurants are increasingly offering healthier alternatives, but are they actually that much healthier? A salad is one of the most common menu options that appears to be healthy, especially when compared to other items on a fast food menu. A Big Mac at McDonald's has 540 calories, whereas a Southwest Buttermilk Crispy Chicken Salad has 520. Ron, would you like some salad? <laughs> Since I am not a rabbit, no, I do not. What appears to be a healthier alternative only has 20 fewer calories than a burger and just as much fat and sodium. Delivery tracking isn't very accurate. Pizza time. You're late. Have you ever placed an online pizza order and received your food much later than expected? According to one pizza chain employee, this is because certain staff can add information to make it look like the item is in a different step of the process than it really is. Rather than showing your food's true location, staff are able to make it appear like your food is on the way when it really hasn't even left the restaurant yet. Liar! So what's the point of tracking your food if the information could be false? Why even go to the trouble. drive through customers are served first. What is taking so long? I wasted all day! You could assume it's faster to get out of your car and place an order inside because everyone uses the drive through Yeah, that's what you wish, Steve. People have discovered that not all orders are processed equally thanks to a few individuals' investigation efforts. Customers who order through the drive through are given priority over customers who order inside the fast food restaurants. drive through usually makes up the bulk of customers, and lines of cars take up more room than lines of people. So the car's gotta keep moving. If you go in to order your food, you'll be served between employees getting orders ready for the drive through Adding items to your order. Why would you do that? Unless you're trying to trick me somehow. The whole purpose of fast food is that it's quick and easy, so you're probably not scrutinizing every item on the bill. According to a news article, one guy in Illinois discovered this after visiting a Panera and discovering a weird $9 charge on his receipt. Unacceptable! When he brought it up to Panera personnel, they had no idea why the fee had been imposed and provided him with some donuts as compensation. If this has happened to you, the employee may claim that it was a mistake and that they would never add on any extra items on purpose. However, it can be very hard to prove otherwise, and it will most likely be your word against the staff and management, which in most cases will get you nowhere. Extra topping charges. Money, 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 money. Extra pickles, no ketchup, more honey mustard. The possibilities are unlimited. When the orders become too elaborate, though, things may get ugly. A $5 million class action lawsuit 
lawsuit was launched against McDonald's in 2018 because consumers claimed they paid for cheese they didn't ask for on their quarter pounder sandwiches. Customers may choose between a sandwich with or without cheese when ordering online, but not while ordering in person, according to the lawsuit. Customers have been forced and are continuously overcharged for these items by being compelled to pay for two slices of cheese that they do not want in order to be allowed to purchase their preferred product. No! Just come on. No! If you're ever conflicted about needing to pay extra for a topping, ask to talk with a manager. Grilled food may not actually be cooked that way. Same, same, but different. Employees at fast food restaurants seldom turn burgers or chicken on a genuine grill, as they would at a neighborhood barbecue. So what gives grilled menu dishes their authenticity? Pre-cooked grilled menu items arrive at the restaurant locations with char marks to resemble truly grilled cuisine. Easy peasy. Many of the chain restaurants and fast food locations are guilty of this practice, as it makes their food look more appealing and allows them to market their items better. Some food may be expensive. There's no expiration date on this. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> There is now. So we've come to terms with the fact that the bulk of our fast food has been frozen. We can deal with that. But expired? That's not acceptable. Customers were frequently provided food that was over its expiration date, according to fast food staff from various fast food businesses. According to a former sandwich shop employee, frozen meat may be served for up to seven days after defrosting, rather than the standard three. Why? The restaurant owner and area manager would regularly force staff to keep serving the food for up to seven days in order to save money. Another Subway employee said that expiry dates were put to the test for weeks, not just days. Food expiry dates were frequently changed so that something would not have to be thrown out. This might not seem like a big concern for a few days, but food would stay around for weeks, which could result in some serious cases of food poisoning. Container sizes are often a lie. Large black coffee. Do you mean a venti? No, I mean a lot. Consider the argument between the cup and the bowl. You may order your soups in a bowl or cup at Panera, with the presumption that the bowl of soup is larger and the cup is smaller. One customer pointed out that the amount of soup you get in the end is the same, though. What? the cup and bowl of soup were exactly the same size. People would pay extra for a bowl and receive the same cup of soup that would be served in a cup. The only difference? The cup is taller and narrower at the base than the bowl. Fake fish. A pirate? Well, that's hardly the image we want for Long John Silvers. A report from New York was released detailing the high levels of seafood fraud seen in stores throughout the region. It's known as species substitution, and it essentially works like this. You go to a supermarket and purchase a costly, high-quality white fish, such as red snapper, which can run you up to $23 per pound. Since most white fish appears the same once it's been cleaned and cut into fillets, retailers and restaurants can sell you practically anything. Instead of the $23 red snapper, you might actually actually have tilefish, tilapia, or some unknown farmed Asian catfish that costs two to three dollars per pound. The difference is kept by the vendor. Oh, I'm rich. I'm rich. This actually occurs more than nine out of ten times with Red Snapper. This type of bait and switch is considerably easier to pull off in restaurants in which the fish is frequently fried and served with sauce, breading, seasoning, or some other disguise. Another finding was that over a quarter of the more expensive, more attractive, and perhaps healthier wild salmon was found to be farmed. For years, comparable investigations have produced similarly horrifying outcomes all around the country. Fake organic foods. Fake, 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 fake. <laughs> A series of articles in 2017 exposed how massive amounts of grains, mostly corn and soybeans, were being fraudulently classified as organic and entering the country. A 36 million ton soybean shipment turned organic only after arriving in the United States, boosting its market worth by millions but preserving all of the pesticides and other non-organic ingredients. The shipments accounted for 6% of annual corn imports and 4% of soybean 
protein imports, which some believe might just be the tip of the iceberg. Worse yet, most of this ends up in animal feed, which in turn results in meats being mislabeled as organic, compounding the situation. Yikes, that's a recipe for disappointment. This isn't to suggest you should never buy organic, but you really should exercise more caution. You won't detect a change in flavor with many other items, which makes things even harder to trust. Show your support by hitting that like button. We do appreciate it. Now, let's keep going. The show goes on! Yeah! Fake sushi. Oh no, a sushi price! Sushi is one of the few examples of a chef-prepared, food-related scam. Yes, you can run into problems with extra virgin olive oil, various fish, and champagne at retail locations and when eating out, but few people make their own sushi at home. Almost all of it is ordered and not prepared by the ones eating it. According to several studies, sushi restaurants have the worst track record for deception, with the great majority having at least one mislabeled item on their menu. Nobu was the only restaurant out of a vast sample of New York City sushi eateries of different price ranges to come out on top for accuracy. These investigation findings are alarming. Sushi fraud is so common that it's difficult to escape it, except at top-tier restaurants like Nobu and highly expensive little omakase restaurants that bring in their seafood daily. But here are a few pointers. When you see white tuna on a sushi menu, as you frequently do, it's usually a red flag. Flag. Trust me when I say this. There really is no such thing as white tuna, which appears to have been created by the sushi business. Worse, many times when DNA testing is done, white tuna isn't even any type of tuna. In the sushi world, the same species replacement is common. In general, nigiri style is a better option than rolls. Fake olive oil. Anchovy fillets and virgin olive oil. Olive oil has had more negative publicity for fraud and fakery than any other food over the last three decades, culminating in a major investigation a few years ago that drew national attention. The positive side was that things appeared to have improved on multiple fronts as a consequence of all this attention. Following the investigation and widespread coverage, Congress directed the FDA to increase inspections of imported olive oil, which makes up the vast majority of olive oil in the United States, and a recent FDA investigation found no evidence of fraud when checking 88 randomly selected domestic olive oil samples in the United States. Consumers who are better informed can purchase high-quality extra virgin olive oil, which is now available in more places and outlets. Olive oil fraud happens when you are duped into paying a high price for inferior quality. This is both a flavor and a health hazard, because true extra virgin olive oil is both wonderfully tasty and one of the healthiest oils available. And when it's not real, you lose both of those advantages. No, God! The extra virgin olive oil debate has reappeared, but this time it's because its season's olive crop was extremely low in important oil-producing countries, such as Portugal, Greece, and Italy, the world's top suppliers of olive oil. In 2018, Italian production fell by approximately 60%, reaching a record low. As a result, olive oil prices have risen, which usually encourages encourages cheating. Fake wines and sparkling alcohol. I'd like your eight dollarist bottle of wine, please. Many of the so-called champagne brunches unfortunately don't always serve up real champagne. The problem, however, is much more severe than bogus brunch menus. The notion that wine names have genuine meaning extends back hundreds of years and even predates the wine business in the United States entirely. For example, Burgundy is more than simply a region of France, it has a thorough an intricate legal and quality definition when it comes to red wine. Red Burgundy, for example, may be prepared from nothing but 100% Pinot Noir grapes harvested in specific locations deemed to be of high quality. But when it comes to champagne, we may be dealing with the world's most quality-controlled food product. Not only must the grapes be produced in certain designated high-quality zones, but rules also dictate how deep they must be planted, what type 
loops may be used, and even who is permitted to trim them. Every step of the process, including bottle fermentation and long-term aging, is meticulously supervised. There is no such thing as terrible, genuine champagne because of its highly controlled quality. None of this applies to imitation bubbly created legally in the United States, which, unlike champagne, does not have to be made from decent grapes fermented in the bottle or aged at all. The widely held belief that champagne can only originate from France is usually the case. While the U.S. version is usually labeled as sparkling wine, you have to take notice of where that bottle of bubbly was made. But it's not only champagne. Burgundy, Chianti, Port, and a slew of other wines that are known for being from a certain region in a specific nation and created under specific standards are also something that you have to watch out for. Think about it. Even domestic wines are rife with consumer deception. Thanks for sticking around. We've got more videos just for you, so stay right here and check one out.